Good morning and welcome to a new video. And yeah, so this morning started with just a cup of tea and some time on the balcony just with my garden, mini garden. And yeah, just chilling. And now, uh, as you can see, I have already finished my hair and makeup because uh, in just about an hour, actually, we're meeting up with some friends for brunch in the city. But before I go there, I wanted to quickly uh, prepare a soup, also known as Barbie soup. Um, this is traditional uh, Lithuanian soup that I really, really love. It's called Shoti Bershe, or Kolbeet soup, or Barbie soup. Um, everybody's now going crazy about it. And it's super simple, it's also very healthy, and um, yeah, I literally have like 20 minutes to do it, so let's do it together. So let's start and uh, well, I'm still wearing my PJs because uh, well, I'm at home, it's Saturday, so why not? And I hope I'm not gonna destroy it because I actually really like it. And the first step with the soup, uh, we will do the beets and we need to keep all the juice inside. So you can use either uh, the oil beets, so this is already uh, pre-boiled, which you can buy in the store. And also you can use um, fermented beets or also fresh. And um, also I will be wearing a glove when I do the beets because I don't want any pink, um, pink fingers. I just want pink soup. And it's already splashing all over the place. And now all you need to do is just spray them. You can also uh, do them really again. So like kind of sticks, but I just grate them and uh, if you have like an appliance to do that for you, then you're lucky. If you're not lucky, then you're like me gonna be hand grating. And um, yeah, just be careful you now. Not to add any human juice to this juice. So the beets are done. Now I'm just gonna quickly take all of this stuff out from here. So we have dill, we have green onion, and we have fresh cucumber and we just need to to chop it all up and that's it actually yeah so as you can see the soup is super simple and it should also be super cool when you actually make it because it turns pink that's why it's now so trending as a crazy barbie soup uh, but yeah, I've been eating it uh, since forever. It's a traditional soup in Lithuania, especially for summertime because it's cold and refreshing. And also it's one of the very few uh, vegetarian dishes. And also this is probably the only thing that I actually miss from home. But it's so easy to make it that it's not a problem at all, as you can see. So you don't even need to boil anything. The only thing that you need to boil uh, will be potatoes or you can also bake them or fry them. Uh, so potatoes and eggs because that's uh, what comes on the side um, of the soup. Okay, next up we have onions and just green, you know, spring onions. That's it. I bought these in the store, but then I put them in the ground. Um, in my balcony garden and they grew a bit more so that's cool um, because you know sometimes they have the tips um, of the roots still kind of intact so they can grow them back and then they continue growing so that's my pack for the onions uh, if you like them so now the onion is also in the bowl so we can go to the next step which is uh, doing the dill and first thing I will just remove the uh, kind of thick stalks and then chop it up, dice it up and then chop it up and one life hack um, if you like also normal hot soups um, then you could just save all the stalks and put them in a ziploc bag and into the freezer and then once you are uh, making your normal traditional hot soup just take them out and throw them into water to give a little bit uh, more flavor to your soup. All right, so the dill is ready to go in too. So basically you just need to prep the ingredient and add it to the bowl. 
you don't even need to use the pot. And now I'm just going to take the beads and add them as well. And then the next step is uh, the filling of the soup. So we don't use water, we use kefir instead. So this makes the soup very um, healthy also for your gut. So I have here German kefir because well, we live in Germany. So it's a little bit more, um, more like a liquid rather than kefir that we are used to. So it's not going to be so thick because of that, but it will be super thick because well, I added a lot of ingredients. So it's more like a salad, kind of. And it's, uh, yeah, basically it. Then after you do that, you just kind of um, mix it up to make it one a good consistency and that's it you just leave it for a couple of hours before you start eating and so that it kind of you know exchange the liquids and my mouth is already watering um, but yeah I'm not gonna eat it now because you still need to wait and also while it's uh, resting in your fridge you can already boil some eggs and also bake or boil your potatoes because that's what we're gonna need on the side for the serving and if you have watched until here and you came for this recipe uh, then I can tell you that for now I'm gonna put it in the fridge I'm gonna go have some fun in the city and if you want to see the results how to serve it then you need to skip to the next timestamp that has uh, marking something like serving of the Barbie pink soup and if you are here for the vlog part as well then let's continue and get out of the house because I think I'm late almost <laughs> You guys, I'm in the city and I'm kind of late, not 10 minutes, but the place is right in front of me already and we're going to eat some Japanese style pancakes, so I will show you what we're having today a little bit and also how they make them because it looks kind of cool. So let's go and dive in. Full stop. Can't believe I live in your thoughts. Think about you all the time, morning, evening, and midnight. Such a wonderful delight. Forgo, give up everything that I own. Yeah, I'd give it all up now just to be with you somehow. Unexpected love was found. Rose in a garden, and it shows if I'm honest. You're the leaves. Good morning, guys, and welcome to a new day. It's Sunday, so the second day of the weekend, and yesterday after the pancake brunch we took a quick stroll through the old town and we had another drink because some of our um, friends, they were thirsty for something else. Um, we had a really nice chat that from casual drink chat turned into kind of a light version of a group therapy session. Uh, which is always really fun because it just kind of, you know, you connect with everybody even deeper uh, on another level because you also get to know them better, you can also tell more about yourself, so that was very fun. And after that, uh, I just like saw the clouds coming, so I quickly checked the weather app and it showed that it would start really, really bad storm uh, just like within half an hour, so we quickly paid and left and I was super lucky because I got home uh, right before the hell started because it was so windy, so rainy um, and yeah, I still haven't gone outside to check my balcony garden because I kind of don't want to see the damage but yes, I still have to do that in case I also need to uh, fix a few things uh, out there so 
um, I guess we can also do that together in a bit and before that I thought I would share with you my quick morning uh, skincare routine for a rainy summer day when you don't really need to do a lot and when you don't plan to be outside a lot or do anything much so more like a chill day when you still want to look nice uh, look like you're ready to conquer the world but also not overly ready because while well, it's still a chill sunday and uh yeah you also need to give some rest to yourself and your skin and so first thing is to put away the hair from the face and then we just clip it and back like so <laughs> something like that and the first step is now especially in summer I love using this pixie spray um, you can see right you can <laughs> it's a vitamin wake up mist orange blossom and citrus extracts and it's energizing facial water so basically it's like a toner in a spray version and I just use it um, in the morning before applying the moisturizer so just mist it over your face and your neckline and then also during the day if you feel like you would like some uh, refreshment uh, during the day also it can be used over the makeup or in the evening before your night skincare routine because um, well it's just basically uh, water like with extract so it's very nice and uh, refreshing because it's citrusy and then when you know the mist absorbed. <laughs> um, my next step is some moisturizer and currently I have this Clinique Moisture Surge Hydrating Supercharge Concentrate. It's very lightweight gel texture so perfect for the summertime because like it doesn't leave any film on your skin, it doesn't feel very heavy at all. Um, I'm using it as a, well, second step kind of after the spray um, as uh, like my morning and evening uh, step. So you can also use it like it says that it's allergy tested, 100% fragrance free, use AM and PM on clean skin. And yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm just gonna add some pumps on my face then as a next step after my clinique moisturizer i use some um, eye cream um, and this one i use only in the morning because this one is a bit more like uh, drier i would say consistency so it doesn't uh, leave any um, greasy feeling afterwards so it's also not too bad for you know applying the eye makeup and i took a bit too much right now but anyway okay so the eye cream is applied as well it's uh, from babur and it's the awakening eye cream so it's perfect for the morning time and it's also slightly like this green undertone kind of masks maybe a little bit if you have redness around your eyes um, and also, well, right now I just applied a little bit too much of it, so some of it is now on my hands, uh, but it's fine. And I've been using it um, for almost a year now, I think. Um, and well, still kind of enough of it inside, so it's like really, really uh, a lot of like, don't need a lot of it. Uh, it's just 15 ml, and it's been almost a year since I started using it. So really good um, and also like my eyes they don't feel irritated or not, anything my skin also feels fine because there's actually one eye cream that I have now in my bathroom that uh, actually irritates my skin a little bit so I get like slight red um, bumps around the eye area after using it I tried it now I think twice or maybe three times and after every use it happens so I think like now I definitely figured out it was from that eye cream so I'm not gonna use that one anymore and this one is really good so I really recommend it and usually if it was sunny my next step would be um, just a very nice uh, sunscreen but today it's raining the whole day entire day not even gonna stop for five minutes so we're not gonna see sun at all also tomorrow and the day after tomorrow but uh, this just means that uh, we're not gonna spend time outside and there will be no 
UV light uh, also, unless of course from the screen, but I'm also gonna try to limit that uh, if I can manage. Uh, so yeah, anyway, not gonna use the sunscreen today. Also not gonna use any BB, CC or any foundation. Um, and I'm just gonna powder a little bit my face. So currently like I'm just uh, using this compact powder from Manhattan. It's a German brand and it's uh, kind of for um, you know acne prone skin which is my type of skin so I've been using it since I was a teenager so I guess I started using it when I was like around 15 or something and I never had any issues like it's not clogging my pores or anything and uh, yeah so I'm just gonna use a little bit of it uh, with a big fluffy brush that I got from uh, Real Techniques and I have a full unboxing of all of my Real Techniques brushes if you're interested in watching those um, and also I've been using them now for almost a year and still like them um, they still look cute and I just need to give them a nice wash but anyway let's apply this okay so we powdered up and now I'm just gonna use uh, very light shaded shades of this palette um, it's Maybelline Total Temptation shadow and highlight palette so I'm gonna use the orangey side corally side uh, for today just because I feel like it and we have four shades here so the lightest one I will just apply all over and then I will take this medium into the crease and then I will take the darkest one just along the lash line a little bit and I'm gonna take this corally one just to add some color okay so the eyeshadow is applied as well I'm not gonna do any blush um, just because well I'm not gonna do anything as well so for staying at home and maybe leaving the house for a little while will be enough now next step is applying mascara and right now I'm using this max factor full slash effect um, also this one I've been using since forever I did get a push up lashes from uh, Charlotte Tilbury quite recently which I really liked a lot but I ran out of it and this one was a lot easier to get because you can get it just from this drugstore next door so you don't really need to order or anything or go to the city so that's why I got back to this one it has like this really wide um, silicone brush uh, so I really like that not a big fan of the normal uh, brushes so I prefer this kind of harder silicone ones and yeah that's what I'm gonna do now <laughs> okay so mascara is on now let's do the brows and I'm just using the uh, brow mascara this one is from NYX and it's Thick It Stick It Thickening Brow Mascara and shade uh, Cool Ash Brown um, and yeah this one is also fine and you can get it from the drugstore actually this mascara this brown mascara has kind of um little hairs inside so it kind of fills up very nicely okay so the brows are here just a little bit more definition i don't really do my brows extremely uh bright and shining just because well um, I don't think it fits my face since naturally I don't have really uh, dominant brows so just kind of adding a little bit more definition is enough and now I'm gonna add just a little bit of this Charlotte Tilbury uh, lip gloss uh, it's in pillow talk so it fits any skin tone and also I think it has hyaluron uh, in it so also very nice and hydrating and voila this is your lazy rainy sunday look basically um the hair now can also come down and here we go and here we are outside and it's cold ish <laughs> and wet and this is the first damage so we have here my uh what is it cayenne pepper that is resting on the cat grass
And next to it we have already blooming, but so wet, strawberry plant. Same here, the cayenne pepper. And it has a support of the mini strawberry plant. I keep them here just because they're still growing and it rains so I don't forget to water them. They get at least some rain because I think last few years I was killing all my strawberries because I was under watering them. So this year I decided to keep them here while they're small to make sure, okay, and these guys as well are resting and I need to get some support for them. Okay, so here we have all of them standing again, so that's good. The catnut is flying from the wind, the cat crust is growing, and here we have my baby strawberries. They escaped their little pots because I just want to grow more strawberries, and that's the easiest way. So basically, the strawberry plant usually shoots out some of these kind of tentacles with baby plants on them and then you can just put them in smaller containers uh, pots and then they will grow roots and then after maybe a couple of weeks you can just cut this off and it will be an independent strawberry plant that's the easiest way to multiply strawberries and the rest of the garden looks good these guys tomatoes they have zero tomatoes on them um, because I guess it was just way too hot. So they have some um, kind of blooms somewhere, but they all died off. Like here, you see, they all died. I think it was just way too hot because we had about a week or two of over 30 degrees every single day and they were not ready for that. And now there is something new coming, so hopefully We'll get some tomatoes till this year, but I don't think so because it's too cold now. Because <laughs> also here I have some tomatoes. They're all green. So at least these guys maybe could still manage to get red or yellow. I don't remember which ones we have here. Then I have here spring onions. I just got them from the supermarket because we need it. And then yeah, it's the ones actually that I chopped for the soup that I still have to show you how to serve. And I chopped it off yesterday in the morning and today it's already growing new shoots. So that's how it works with onions. And we have some lettuce here, nice and crunchy, and some mint, and that's it. And now let's go back inside. So the last time I talked to you, I said let's go inside because it's cold, but then later we actually decided to go for a walk in the rain. Well, it was just like drizzling, so not too bad. And now we're back home and we are, I would say, hungry. Also, it's dinner time, so now finally let's serve the Barbie soup. And actually, the color is amazing. It is so bright pink purple, so like fuchsia color. Anyway, let's go and start serving. Okay, so here we go. The Barbie soup. You see, the color is so, so lovely. And on the side, we have some uh, baked potatoes. And we need to add the egg still. And don't mind the broken plates. It's just because, well, I'm clumsy. Anyway, so usually in the restaurant, they would serve just like half an egg, but because we are at home, we are not stingy, we only like our eggs, we do one full egg. And here we go, the other one. And it can be like properly hard boiled or just slightly hard, completely up to you. If this one doesn't want to go, you just get out like this. So basically this plate looks even better. And here you go, the purple pink Barbie soup super trendy right now and we're gonna eat it and so to eat it you just take your potato I usually just take one grab some soup and 
and it's a perfect combination of nice warm potato and fresh cold beet soup for summertime or actually any time of the year very lightweight very healthy very good for your gut because kefir bacteria all of that is good and also with an egg mm. I will leave the recipe in the description below.